segment with pastor and best-selling author Carl Gallup. We're talking about biblical prophecy, Israel, and Jerusalem. Uh, Carl, every president in my memory would uh, has always wanted the legacy of being the one that brought peace to the Middle East, and, and President Trump has made it clear uh, that's one of his goals. Um, he said in early 2019, this is going to become a front burner issue. Um, what what do you anticipate looking forward here? I, I know he's been a staunch supporter of Israel, maybe the staunchest president in support of Israel we've had, but there's pressure in his own administration to force Israel to compromise, is there not? Yeah, apparently there is, and there always has been, and always will be, I guess. And, and here's the thing. You know, we've got to remember that most people in D.C., inside the Beltway and in the Ivory Towers, and even those that have occupied the White House, including Donald Trump. I mean, if Donald Trump is a believer, and he claims to be, but he's a baby believer, and and I'm not making excuses for him, I'm just saying he probably doesn't have a clue the kind of stuff we're talking about right now on the radio. And and, and I'm not being disparaging towards him. I mean, there are a lot of people that have been Christians for 40 years that don't know the stuff we just talked about. So, So the point I'm trying to make is that usually the Washington, D.C. establishment and uh, Trump certainly hasn't been part of the establishment, but he is now. He's the president. <laughs> um, they, they come from a secular worldview. I mean, and Trump has kind of a biblical worldview. Ronald Reagan had kind of a biblical worldview, but not deep, not as deep as you and Dave and I just went. Uh, but, but so what president wouldn't want peace in the Middle East? I mean, I can't imagine a president coming in saying, I don't want peace in the Middle East. I hope they all kill each other. You know? <laughs> I mean, they're not going to say that. So they got to say it. Well, if you say it, then you got to do something. Well, what do you do? I mean, thousands of years, we've never been able to pull that off. So each president kind of hopes that they're the one that can come up with something. And so down through the years, we've come up with these land for peace deals. And Israel has gone along with some of them. Well, actually, all of them eventually, even though they, they fought some of them, but some of them even Israel offered. So So, you know, it's just been back and forth and up and down and round and round. And, yes, you're right. Every administration, including Donald Trump, comes in and says, well, I've got a peace plan. I've got a peace plan. Okay, okay. And then sometimes, you know, eschatologists, prophecy experts will say, well, that's the Antichrist. You know, the Bible says that that Israel's going to make a seven-year peace treaty with the Palestinians. Well, guys, I hate to burst people's bubble, but actually the Bible doesn't say that, not those words. You can interpret it that way. What the Bible says is he, that is the son of perdition, the the abomination that causes desolation, he will make a treaty with many. That's what it says. You know, and so you can figure out the seven years from the seven, from the seventy weeks of Daniel, etc. Uh, but it doesn't say the Jews will sign a treaty with the Palestinians. It just doesn't say that. But that could be what it's going to be, and, and, and many people have speculated. But I just think we need to be honest with the Scriptures and just say, look, something's going to happen in the Middle East in the last days. There's going to be some kind of a covenant that is broken in the middle of this seven-year time period uh, that is made uh, a large group of people. Is it the United Nations? Is it Israel? Is it the United States? Is it the Palestinians and the Jews? I, uh, I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. So I think we need to be careful about being dogmatic about it, but at the same time we need to be watchful. So yeah, he's got people in his administration wanting him to to, to maybe land for peace giveaways. My my problem with that is there are biblical admonitions against that. You guys know that. <clears throat> Excuse me, you've talked about it. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to clear my throat. You guys have talked about it on your show. You know it. Your listeners know it. Uh, plus the fact that the Palestinians, they, they they don't want little pieces here and there. They want the whole thing. They want the Jews gone. They say it all the time. They want them dead. They want them driven into the sea. They don't want an Israel over there. Uh, Hitler didn't want it. Uh, most of the world didn't want it. The United Nations still doesn't want it. The OIC, the Organization of Islamic Council, they don't want it. They certainly don't want Jerusalem in the hands of the Jews. So we've got a mess. But the Bible told us it would be that way until the very last, when the nations would form an alliance, they would conspire, and they would eventually encircle Jerusalem. Jesus said that. The Old Testament says it. The New Testament says it. And Jesus said that in the last days that Jerusalem would be surrounded by its enemies, and they would come to attack. They would come to make war. So, you know, I mean, 
that that's kind of the long and short of it. I know we're radio and we're cramped for time. I don't have two hours to stand behind a pulpit and teach this with PowerPoint. So, <laughs> but but that's my quick version of where we are. So we need to pray for Donald Trump. I think his heart is right. But um, that's a mess over there, and I don't think he's going to bring peace. No, we know that. In your recent book,